Howdy, lieutenants and economists. The most volatile, evil, disgusting things on the planet, humans. If you have a video request, you can always go to assholeconsulting.com. Yeah, I am gonna charge you, kids. And that is the importance of not fucking up. You are such an asshole! Hey everybody, got a very interesting question. I think this is going to benefit a lot of people. Um, so thank this guy for forking over the money for it. So we want to help him and also help a lot of you. And I'm going to introduce kind of a, a different theory or different philosophy I have uh, that hopefully will solve a lot of problems, uh, especially in the psychology field. Uh, but I do want to delineate between this. This is uh, advice I'm giving to this person uh, that, that cannot be considered psychological advice. This is This is... I don't know what it would be considered. It would be considered outside of um, psychology in its traditional sense of like, you know, DSVM5 and, oh, you have this disorder, you have this disorder. My whole premise of this video is, do you really have a disorder? All right. Are there things you can do that are under your control before you fork over $200 an hour to some therapist who just graduated at the age of 25 with her fucking master's in fucking child psychology and is probably more screwed up than you. Is there something that you can do, that you can assess about yourself with intellectual honesty? If you admit you have a problem, that's the first step and maybe you don't need to go see a therapist. But I, I'll explain this in a little bit uh, more detail later. So, <clears throat> uh, a young man writes, Aaron, I have three related questions I would like to ask you. However, before I ask you, I'd like to give you some context about my situation. I have recently been told by many people, such as family members, co-workers, and friends, that they think I'm a psychopath. Later on, I had taken some online tests that dealt with personality disorders, and at the same time, I also wanted to check what my IQ level was. The personality test said, uh, had said that I have, I show, high levels of narcissism, moderate levels of psych psychopathy, and extreme levels of Machiavellianism. Uh, let's stop right here before we get into your IQ. That may all be true. But here's what's really interesting. People typically with these genuine psychological disorders don't give a flying fuck. They won't go to the level of testing it. In other words, the fact that you are concerned about this and the fact you have consideration, altruism, and a care for what others think almost makes it impossible for you to be a true narcissist or a true Machiavellian. Uh, now, that doesn't mean that you, you aren't indifferent, that you're not a cold-hearted bastard, and that you don't put yourself number one. But I want to point out, like, usually to get a narcissist to admit they have a problem is impossible. And you on your own are already trying to investigate and solve this problem. So you've admitted that you have a problem, and that's 95%, I think, of what psychologists try and hurdle over or actually profit off of, like, oh, don't let them admit they have a problem, otherwise they might not come back. So you're already on the right path. In other words, you have morality, you have empathy, you, you tr deep down inside, you have altru not altruism, I won't go that far, but you care about what other people think. Uh, a true psychopath wouldn't. They, they, they're really just absorbed in themselves. So that's a good thing. So I, I don't know, yes, the tests say you might have this, and you may have been, here's another thing, you're probably quite honest in these tests. Uh, which, you know, is kind of, again, it, it shows that you really want to figure it out. A lot of people just lie to, t lie to themselves. Yeah, I'm fine. Everything's perfectly all right. So you're already showing signs that, like, you, whatever problems you have and you want to solve, you're likely going to be able to solve them. Or at least you have a higher than average chance because you admit you have some problem and you're willing to solve them by taking harsh criticism, coming here and having me rip you apart. So these are all good signs. The IQ test I took said that my IQ was between 85 and 95, although I think part of the low score was due to my laziness. Now, here's the thing. 85 is officially retarded. The way you write, the way you, you craft these sentences, it's very clear. You are lazy. All right? You remind me of this kid I had in my uh, statistics class. I had all the kids take the class, and this one kid who was one of the smartest ones, he got an 85. And he's like, oh, I guess I'm just an idiot. I'm like, yeah, that's officially retarded. And he's like, oh, I'm retarded? It's like, no, you fucking moron. You're not retarded. You just didn't try. You're fucking lazy. That's the problem. So uh, you already you already theor oh, it's your laziness. Did you try? Did you really try your best? Did you, oh, fuck, oh. Did you know it was timed? You know, they're timed. So uh, you're, you don't have an IQ of 85. It's just impossible. Maybe 95, but again, I don't think your writing would be this clear. 
or this well structured. So take the fucking test right the next time, okay? Don't do it a half-assed job. Uh, people with IQs of 85 don't do this. So again, you're showing evidence that whatever symptoms you're showing, whatever test you're taking, are contradictory to the fact you're writing this, if this, this is making any sense. Huh? This leads me into the questions I have for you. The first one is, how do I go about fixing my laziness? The second question is, what career paths are suited for someone with these traits? And lastly, how would I go about preserving, uh, preventing myself from screwing my relationships with other people over because of these traits? So I put together some notes here, and I apologize if this is a bit rambling or a bit staccatic, but I want to hit them all here. It is my personal theory, my personal belief, which I cannot prove, I could be completely wrong, that laziness explains 100% of all fake psychological disorders and 90% of the real ones. You say, well, what does that mean? Okay, if you're faking a psychological disorder, I believe it's because you're too fucking lazy to go and work hard in the real world and be sane. And it's much easier to just fake that you have a problem and get a bunch of resources and be the victim or whatever. Or I don't, you know, nobody's perfect. Everybody has a flaw. Everybody has an area they need to work on, unless you have a psychological problem, and then you don't have to work on your faults or your weaknesses. So I truly believe that all these people oh, I have ADD. Oh, all the fuck, the number of fucking dipshits my age that claim they had dyslexia. Oh, fuck you. Oops, I, I, I typed ot instead of two. I have dyslexia, give me money. No, you don't have fucking dyslexia. You're a lazy fucking cunt, right? So uh, if that's the case, which I believe it is because I, I believe the vast majority of the psychological disorders are, di are fake, people faking it and getting diagnosed with it, which is why I say 90% of the diagnosed ones, all right? So let's read through it again. My personal theory is that laziness explains 100% of all mental dis or fake mental disorders. In other words, if you don't have a disorder, but you claim to have one, you're faking it because you're lazy. And 90% of the diagnosed ones, because I believe 90%, especially with the millennials and Gen X, 90% of the mental problems are all fake. You don't have a mental problem. You're just a lazy, whiny cunt. Now, of course, I could be wrong. There are, I haven't studied, seen any studies. I don't know. And Lord Almighty knows the psychology profession ain't going to dare ever look at that statistic and say, well, you're all faking it because that would like ax off 50% of their income. They need you guys. But if you want to solve your problem, that's what I think. So going forward, be intellectually honest because therapy is expensive and it's hard. <laughs> it's hard. I'm sort of told I haven't gone through it. Um, if you can solve your problem without having to go see a therapist, it saves you a ton of time and money. And you may not have a problem. It could just be that you're lazy. So if you can solve your laziness, there's a pretty good chance you're going to solve your narcissism, your Machiavellianism, and your, quote, uh, psychopathy. All right? So try it this way first. And then if it doesn't work, okay, then maybe you do genuinely have a mental problem of which I cannot solve. Nobody can solve it except the therapist. That's what psychology and therapy is for. That's where psychologists do good work. It work is if you actually have a mental problem. But if you're faking it, uh, they're, you're going to spend a lot of time and money talking to these therapists, and they're going to run around in circles trying to get you to admit that you don't have a problem or it's within you. Da 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 da. Me, no, not here. Let's do the asshole approach first. All right. See if you really do have a mental disorder. If you really do think, then go talk to a therapist. All right. As, you know, of course, this assumes like you're thinking, well, I feel like killing people. Yeah, if you're having those thoughts, you better go talk to a therapist like now. But it doesn't seem that way here. So I, and I have to be very careful because I don't want to get into the world of legality where it's like, well, you're not a therapist. You're right. I am not a therapist. But I'm saying try this first. All right. If you feel like it, then go talk to a therapist or I actually go talk to a therapist now. So. Let us look at the three qualities and traits, or qualities and traits, the three problems you think you have, all right? Narcissism is the pursuit of gratification from vanity or egotistic admirations of one's own attributes, all right? That's lazy, all right? Can narcissism be caused by lazy? Yes. Did you do it? Look at all the narcissists. The whole point of a narcissist is to think they're great without doing anything of accomplishment or achievement. Well, that's lazy people. So lazy people tend to go into narcissism. I mean, you see this in these idiot moronic kids who like graduate from high school and they think they're just so intelligent because their teacher told them to. They've never done anything of accomplishment. All these idiots graduating from co college, don't have a job, don't have a career, didn't start a business. They think they're so fucking great because they graduated with a degree. They haven't fucking done anything. 
So are you lazy? And could your laziness lead to this diagnosis that you had was narcissism? Okay? Psychopathy, also known as, though sometimes distinguished from, sociopathy, is traditionally defined as a personality disorder characterized by enduring antisocial behavior, diminished empathy and remorse, and inhibited or, or bold behavior. Diminished empathy or remorse. In other words, you don't give a shit. You're antisocial. You don't give a shit about other people. Why? It takes energy to care about other people. If, if you just want to survive, if you just want to get through life, you only care about number one. It's a very easy, non-calorie expending way to only care about yourself and not give a flying fuck about others. The problem is that others are around. <laughs> and when psychopathy gets very bad is when you don't care if they live or you violate their freedoms and their rights and you hurt people. Either costing them money, costing them life, physically harming them, you don't care, and, and you're so disconnected from other people, you start, you take tor enjoyment in torturing them. That's fucked up shit. Here you just seem indifferent about people. Not, and you don't really care to hurt or harm people. You just don't give a fuck about them. You care way more about yourself because caring about someone else, again, that takes energy and effort, and you're lazy. So again, if you got rid of the laziness and actually invested the time, energy, resources, and calories of energy into caring about other people, yeah, it's going to it, it's going to take effort. But again, if you weren't lazy, would this diagnosis or this test that you have psychopathy or show moderate psychopathy, would that go away? All right? And then Machiavellianism. Machiavellianism is the, un the employment of cunning and duplicity in statecraft or in general conduct. The word comes from the Italian Renaissance dis diplomat and writer Niccolo Machiavelli, who wrote Il Principe, the Prince, or Principe, the Prince, among other works. In modern psychology, Machiavellianism is one of the dark triad personalities characterized by a duplicitous interpersonal style, a cynical disregard for morality, and a focus on self-interest and personal gain. Again, you're the focus, you're lazy, and you'll do whatever you can to get your own personal self ahead. And that's dangerous, especially combined with psychopathy, because you don't care about other people. You don't view other people as self sentient independent individual beings who have just as much as rights, have just as much in feelings and emotions and torturous pain and enjoyment as you do. Right? So you're it's dangerous. You probably should go talk to a therapist, probably right now. Alright, but again, this is this is to help you. You know, my non-psychological approach where we're, we're approaching laziness, approaching from a labor perspective, from a economics perspective. All right. So here's the deal. Uh, your first question, how do you stop being lazy? And I really believe if you can stop being lazy, this is going to eliminate a lot of these problems, right? The quickest way to stop being lazy is to realize you're going to die. It, this doesn't go on forever, dude. You will die. And if you're going to sit there, I, I don't know, I'm speculating. If you're in your bedroom, you're playing video games all day, there's no purpose in life, you're emo, you're smoking pot, although it doesn't sound like it from, from this. You just have no goals or purpose in life. You're just going through it, going through the motions. You don't care about people. You're just on impulse power just to get to the next day. You're wasting your one shot on life. This is it. This is all you get. I mean, 50 billion people have been on this planet. Humans ain't nothing special, all right? And uh, we've been here, what, two million years? The planet's been around for four billion, universe, maybe 10, who knows? I don't know the math. You're just nothing, you're fucking nothing in the grand scheme of things, except to you. You're here, you're conscious, you're awake, you're watching this right now. You're being intellectually stimulated with words coming out of my mouth. And the heck, you know, there's nothing wrong with video games. You enjoy playing video games. Again, I don't even know if you play video games, but you do something in your life that has some joy, some something that gives you at least your consciousness, your sentiousness, you, you being here right now, enjoy it. Now, you do that to us. Everybody does it no matter what. They enjoy, you know, obese people enjoy eating. Alcoholics enjoy drinking. You enjoy doing as little as possible to get by, but that's not what life is for. You got to go out and live it. Go climb mountains, get a hobby, do something. Even though you don't want to, go do something and get your body moving and flowing. I have a great video called, um, or post, how running tricks your brain into thinking it has agency. Look up that one. Maybe I'll put it down below. You got to trigger your brain to release the chemicals and hormones to make you think you have a purpose in life, even if you don't. Because the truth is, the vast majority of 50 billion people who have lived on this planet really didn't have a point and purpose in life. They really didn't. All right? But that's 
from the outside observer and history looking in. From you in looking out, what do you want to do? Do you want to go climb mountains? Do you want to ride motorcycles? What do you want to do? Do you want to have a career? There's, there's value and enjoyment in work. I mean, people, there. you want to talk about a real depression problem that doesn't go addressed. There are millions of guys, especially men, who retire now and they retire from their career, their 30, 40, 50 year career, and then they're just depressed and then there's a jump in suicide. They have no more agency. You have got to find agency and purpose in life. And the quickest way to realize that is, or to get that is to realize you will die. So look up the song by William Shatner. You can look it up, it's called You're Gonna Die or it's called You'll Have Time. Look that up, maybe I'll put that in the, the uh, comments section or the description below. That puts everything in context. This will end. Do not leave this planet without having some ice cream, chasing a girl with big ass titties, uh, fucking as many of them as possible, riding motors, do sky, something. Go do something instead of whatever it is. Whatever you're doing now, stop doing that and do something different because it just doesn't seem like you have any incentive. And so once you find a reason or a purpose in life or an activity or whatever it is, you'll stop being lazy and you'll pursue it. Okay? The other thing, the other reason to stop being lazy, the other way to stop being lazy is to realize the most important thing in life is actually not skydiving or mountain climbing or motorcycle riding, it's other people. All right? If you look back at the most fond memories you have, there are other people there. And the memories are fun, not because of where you were, but because of the conversation and the people there you were with. The parties you were at, getting drunk, having a grand old time, laughing with your buddy Bob. Talking great, interesting philosophy with the girl until late hours of the evening you didn't want to even have sex with her. Having sex with the girl and having a conversation afterwards. It is always the other people that makes your life worth living. That is the most important thing in life. And if you are truly selfish and lazy, so lazy that you're willing to take advantage of other people and not contribute something to them. I'm not saying you give them money, but contribute something to them, not take advantage of them, not just uh, 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 just just be this suck, this black hole that sucks everybody's emotional energy out of them instead of giving that back to them at, at twice the rate. If you do that, you're never going to have friends and you're never going to have a loved one and, you're, and your family will kind of leave you and abandon you and ostracize you. And you're, yeah, then you are going to have, then it, that only results in a downward spiral. You're no longer incentivized to stop. It just reinforces you like, why the fuck would I go on? No one likes me. And then you become one of these fucking mid -tow Oops, sorry. Virgin tell kids. <laughs> ow, ow. <laughs> you become one of these fucking genuine losers. Uh, who, who has really no reason to live because it's all self looking at yourself and no and then yeah people leave you no one wants to hang out with the with the party pooper so you gotta go don't kiss people's ass go live your life go do something stop sucking off of everybody's emotional uh, psychological and social energy I'm not saying you gotta be the life of the party either but don't talk about yourself do, do the rule of three, one in three. I always do this rule. You wait for somebody to say three things about themselves or make a comment or three anecdotes about their so, themselves or their observations, and then you say one thing about yourself. And if there's a lull in conversation, then you ask them questions about themselves. Uh, usually it's ping pong, one comment to the other. So it's not like this person's going to say three things, you say one thing about yourself. They, they say three, you say one. Because then it's, it's really painful for them to keep up the conversation. What it is, is they say one thing, you ask them a question about themselves, they say another thing, you ask them another question about themselves, they say a third thing, three, now you tell them an interesting anecdote or observation or whatever you want about you that you've had. And then they might say, oh, that's very interesting, da, 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 da. and then usually this, well, then you ask them another question about themselves, right? And it sucks, yes, you're going to have to put energy into that system. You will likely put more energy into the system, but over the long haul, what I have found is people then like you and want to hang out with you because you're at, they, people just like to talk about themselves. That's it. People want to share their experiences. And if you can do it over the long, though, long haul, though, people start to find you more interesting simply because you're just asking them about them and are kind of actually being a little bit selfless and, and then maybe every once in a while you, you give them a little bit of a dose. So you've got to put other people ahead of yourself. You have to value people more than yourself and especially not everybody but people in your love life, you know, the, your wife, your girlfriend, your daughter, your children. 
your family because that way you will get these more most important things in your life, other people in your life. And that's the real reason to live. So listen to that song, William Shatner song, all that. So once you realize that, that you are going to die and the most important thing in life is other people, you will pretty much get the incentive to stop being lazy. The final thing, though, is just stop it. Just fucking stop it. You know exactly what you have to do. And this really is the frontal brain over the rear brain because lazy is ingrained in everybody's underlying psychology. Because laziness is a great survivalist tactic, especially for 99.998% of the time humans have been alive. For 2 million years, the best strategy was laziness. Because what are you going to do? Go run out in the desert chasing after a little, little I don't know, tarantula to eat? And you're going to spend way more calories of energy chasing that tarantula than what that tarantula can give you in nourishment. Chase an antelope up there. Are you kidding me? So laziness... Is, is almost like being a Prius, a very fuel-efficient car. It only makes sense from a survivalist standpoint. Well, the problem is today we have so much, technology has given us so much in terms of food, clothing, shelter. We don't really have to worry about that. Now we have to worry about laziness being a drawback. This is why obesity is such a problem. It, it, it's, we're lazy not to discipline ourselves. So you need to have this part of your brain, your frontal lobes, override your lizard brain, your Neanderthal brain that's screaming for you to be lazy because we might die if we expend our calories of energy. No, it's quite the opposite today as it has been in the past hundred, especially the past 50 years. You gotta go and live your life and do interesting things and get other people around you and put people, other people ahead of you. Now, you see, you would have been great. You would have been a great survivalist back in caveman days. That's like a perfect but yeah, I'm number one. I got to take care of me because if I don't take care of me, then the tribe's got to take care of me and I'm a parasite. So in that regard, yes, being that, that it's almost like you you have this brain of uh, no more than 300. Well, we all have the brain of 300 years ago. It's just that you're not using your frontal cortex. Use your frontal lobes and override the rest of your brain. It's hard. It's really hard. It, dogs don't have the ability to do it. Dogs, as you know, will eat all the food in the bowl and they'll get fat and they'll die because dogs don't realize, oh, wait, you know, there's been some great economic advancements and technological advancements in agriculture and livestock. And right now, I don't need to eat this bowl of food because I know my master will give me more food and I don't want to get dog diabetes and overweight and heart attack. I should really conserve. Dogs don't have that ability. We humans do. Don't be a fucking dog. Be a human. No better. All right, choose not to be lazy. All right, so that, that's, the, that's the three ways not to be lazy. Now, we also answered your question of what was it? How would I prevent myself from squaring up my relationships with other people because of these traits? Again, by putting other people ahead of you. Again, don't be taken advantage of by other people. But this is interesting. Learn more about people. Take an interest in them. What did they? That's interesting. You know you. I know me. You know how bored I am driving across the country at night? That's why I listen to podcasts. I don't listen to myself talk. I already know everything there is to know about me. I don't talk to myself about myself. It's quite a boring story. It's been the same fucking story for 40 years. I don't need to retell it. That's why I listen to podcasts. That's why I listen to Davis Arena. That's why I listen to Stefan Molnu. That's why I listen to Bill Burr. That's why I listen to Silvio Canto. That's why I go to my website. You see all the podcasts I listen to, the Honey Badger Brigade, all these people. I like to hear other thoughts and other people. So learn to take an interest in other people. Learn to, to, to be entertained as if you're watching a movie or be, have a great storyteller. This is why storytellers are so cool. Like, like a, you get a guy who can tell a really good story, they're entertaining, and they could just capture an entire bar because everyone wants to listen to it because that guy's way more entertaining than uh, whatever, some movie starring whatever fucking person is that the person is most recently now. So that will solve, again, solving the laziness and putting people first, learning about them, will solve all, well not all, it will solve the majority of your social problems. And then finally, career, what, what kind of jobs can you get with these traits? Frankly, none that are honorable. Uh, the, the ones that are not going to be a surprise, you can become a politician, you can become a criminal, you can become, become like a con artist, or you can become like a bankster scum piece of shit. I mean, you can really just become the most hated group of people in the world. Uh, you, and, and that's if you want to maintain those traits. That's if you want to work on those traits and use them as... Ad you could become a good, noble, moral politician. Like, you lie, you're very manipulative and Machiavellian. But your aims are good and noble and pure. I don't know if you're going to enjoy that life. I mean, that's what Hillary Clinton is. Um, 
Look, I mean, look at where that path, and I'm not doing this because I hate her, Hillary Clinton. I'm using this as a real example. Look at that woman's face. Look inside her eyes. Do you think that woman has ever enjoyed her life? And when she smiles or laughs, it's all fake. That woman is miserable. She's a phenomenal politician. Amazing. She tells everybody what they want to hear. She's very manipulative. She's a liar. She's a cheat. She's a true psychopath. She has, or no, she's a sociopath. She can function very highly in society. She's very Machiavellian. But you look at her. That woman has no human interaction, no human contact, no human love. Bill is having the time of his life, getting his dick wet with, wet with a bunch of hot little 20-somethings, even teenage girls. Everybody likes Bill. Everyone wants to talk to Bill. He's the life of the party. And she is this gray, miserable, washed-up, corn husk of a woman who just pissed away her own life pursuing political power and not loved ones, not human beings, not friends, not family, uh, not social stuff. It's money and power and she's just, she'll make presents, she still won't smile. She won't. She'll just, oh, she'll be happy up on stage because she's getting attention. But she, I mean, just look at the girl. It's, it's a perfect example. So do you, do you want that kind of career? Because you got to not be human to do it. You got to be able to cut people off, not care about other people, hurt people along the way. Think about think about Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson, those fuckers. Oh my God, the heartlessness that they have to sell their own people down the river just so they can make money. To keep the black community at effectively last place just so they can, how they put on that face and put on that act, I don't know, but they're, they're sociopaths, they're politicians, they're charlatans, they're Machiavellians. Do you want to become like those guys? Because they're not happy either, all right? I think it's getting rid of your laziness and coming up with a new you. And then the career that you have is anything but politician, criminal, banker, con artist, or finance guy. Uh, if, if you're really you, you really like them. I mean, and I'm not saying that having Machiavellian traits is a bad thing or having elements of these things is, is a bad thing. Like if I wasn't Machiavellian, we wouldn't have asshole consulting. And you're damn right I put myself number one. Right? Not the expense of others. Not that I don't have empathy. God Almighty, not that I don't feel bad. I've done some horrible things to some people in the past. I just felt horrible. And, and that's another thing. When you, Be warned. When you go down this path and you decide to change, you're going to look back at other people that you've hurt and you'll be like, holy shit. And it makes me wonder if you didn't grow up poor because this is... That might be. I, I, nine will get me ten. You probably didn't come from wealth. Because this is a survivalistic... This is, again, that... Neanderthal survivalist brain and strategy and belief system that would get you by if you had no resources, if you were poor, if there was no one backing you up, right? Well, that may be the case, but you're going to alienate a lot of people along the way. So you, if you want to have a really good life, you want to have other people in your life, you want to have a different career where it's going to be much more rewarding than a politician or criminal or banker scum, you're going to have to change. Now, here's the problem. There are many different types of personalities. Which one you want to become, I don't know. And it's not that you get to choose. Just become whatever it is that you want to become. It'll, it'll happen naturally. But being a Machiavellian, uh, borderline psychopath, uh, what was the other one? Narcissist, that ain't going to get you anywhere in life. All right? So I keep a little bit of the Machiavellianism in there. The cynicism, that's very good. The pessimism, that helps because there are a lot of scumbags out there to screw you over. Uh, but try and put humans first in your life and I think everything else will kind of fall into place. You'll find that you all have a new agency or purpose in life that will further define what you may want to do as a career uh, but the key thing is to get rid of that fucking laziness. That's what you got to do. So follow the advice there. It would not hurt at all. Matter of fact first thing you should do after you're done watching this, go talk to a therapist because this kind of they will also have you know, they can run tests and talk to you and they, they have insights that I don't. Obviously, they're professionals. Uh, they can speak directly to the psychological aspects of this. I can only give you economic theory and, and, and observations of laziness and labor and, and evolution. Maybe even a little bit of neurochemistry. But they have other... Uh, there's another side to this that they could address and it'd be worth it at least just talking to somebody for an hour. You know, that couple, a couple extra hundred bucks, uh, definitely worth it. But consider what I said. See, you know, see if it's under your steam, under your power, under your willpower to do this and change. Uh, and, and to help with that and, you know, make sure, you know, 
on the psychological side, go talk to a therapist. Absolutely. Anyway, hope that helped. Wishing you the best of luck. Toodles.